Hello, everyone. This is Reggie with A Team Appliance. Hang on. Sorry about that. That's a little blurry. <clears throat> with A Team Appliance. And this is my uh, QA for customers. If you're a customer, uh, you have questions. If you are a technician, you have questions or knowledge to share, uh, or if you're just a business owner and you just want to uh, see what uh, other people in the industry is doing, um, especially when it comes to marketing or you know whatever questions you may have, uh, I'd like to give my input and my uh, experience and share it with you guys and whoever else uh, logs on, their experiences and stuff like that. Everything will be shared. <clears throat> um, I thought it'd be apropos to do this from my laundry room <laughs> it has a cool background it's a little messy but you know it's a laundry room um so uh yeah got, feel free to fire off any questions if you have any uh i'm still trying to get the technology of this thing you know i'm an appliance guy uh not a computer guy so <laughs> i'm still trying to figure this stuff out um cause i do a scheduled broadcast but it, I, it's not it doesn't show me how to go in i don't i can't figure out how to go in there and when it's time to go live to go live from that schedule you know i gotta like do a whole new you know i don't know so anyway i'll figure it out <laughs> these things get better and better it's kind of it's kind of like when you first start off in the appliance business you know you, you don't have a power drill and you don't have you know you just got like a a, a screwdriver from walmart and, and, a, and a wrench you know and uh you, you're figuring it out and as you get you know as time goes on you kind of get better and you get better tools and stuff and so that, that's where i'm at when it comes to this computer stuff so uh, anyway, uh, you know, and I'm the type of guy, if I want to do something, I just start doing it. Uh, the appliance business, I didn't wait. I didn't say, oh, let me go to school and let me, you know, let me get somebody to mentor. Let me get a truck with a sign. Let's do it. Nah, man, if you want to do something, just start. And your experience, everything else will catch up uh, as far as the things you need and the tools you need. So uh, same thing with this with this live broadcast. Um, you know, things, will, you know, the technology will get better. And anybody that's followed my channel, and you see uh, my videos, you, you kind of see my earlier videos were, were, were super amateur. Uh, now they're just amateur. So. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's just about the information. So the information is solid. So excuse the delivery of it, but uh, the information is solid. You'll get it. Good morning, John. What's up, brother? How are you? Welcome. Um, so I'm going to try to do this every Saturday. Um, I'm aiming for 10 o'clock, uh, but, you know, I, I'll put a um schedule on here uh which you can kind of subscribe to and they'll send you reminders um so oh yeah another disclaimer uh, my wife went to the grocery store so i'm alone with the monsters the seven-year-old and the six-year-old so uh they might pop in here you might hear them call my name a few times so <laughs> we'll get through this together so the um beginning it's all about the information so if you guys have any questions feel free to ask them um i love talking about marketing um, I have a, before I got in the appliance business, I have a background in finance. I was a finance director for 12 years, um, and kind of, you know, was working for people and kind of got into the rat race and it's just wanted some independence, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I wanted to live life on my terms and this, uh, this, this business allows you to have that freedom. Entrepreneurship allows you to have that freedom. Um, but even if you work for somebody in the appliance business, you know, you, you still could kind of schedule things around your schedule. So it, it is nice being able to, you know, if my kids are sick at school, I can just up and go and go pick them up or whatever, you know, and I have to ask them by permission. So I like that about this this business. So uh, just their freedom. I feel free. So what up, Jimbo? Welcome, man. Welcome. What's up, Laren? Last week, remember you? What's up? What's up? Um, so... One thing I want to talk about is because uh, I do marketing for appliance business too, so I have a couple of clients that um, I, I do ads for and stuff. And some of the biggest challenges um, I notice is things that are outside the norm. And what I mean by that is, so as far as race and gender, um, I get some people who you know, you know, don't advertise. You know, they, you know, they don't advertise uh, their image because they're afraid of you know somebody might look at the ad and be like oh i'm not hiring that 
that race to come fix my stuff, or I'm not hiring that woman to come fix. <laughs> I want a guy, you know. And we all we all know. I mean, usually, you know, when you think of plant repair, you think about the you know the older Caucasian guy, like you know what I mean. That just you know, it, it's nothing wrong with thinking that. It's just this our program, you know, and in, in, in what we used to seeing. Um, but you know, as the world gets smaller, thanks to the internet, we all have resources and access to marketing and uh, access to information to learn new skills and crafts. Um, but I think you should, whatever you feel may hold you back, hold customers back from using you. I think you should use that as a, um, uh, a, a resource, man. That, that should be something like you should push for that. Like, you know, I feel like being a black man, uh, people push like you know people like you know yeah you got some people who might say i'm not bringing that guy to my house but you got a lot of people that that's proud like oh yeah let me let me i'll use this guy you know i have so many people say that to me uh if you're a woman um you know you just gotta you gotta fight the stereotypes but you know it's, it's all it's all sales so if you're a woman in this business and you know i i know i, I know like one or two that i know um i'm sure it's way more out there and you know I, i'm on a facebook group and there's a lot of women on there that do appliance repair or a lot of them are in the office dispatching and stuff like that um but if you're a woman people cheer for that stuff man like i know here i'm in georgia and i know there's a plumber plumbing business all the vehicles are purple and it's a you know it's owned by a woman i assume because it's uh you know it says uh i can't remember the name of it it's like ladies plumbing or something like that and i'm sure they got guys working for them but uh, they embrace, you know, their gender. And then, you know, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe negative stereotypes uh, revolve around it. Maybe people do want to see a guy come in their house. Um, but you have more people cheering for you because you're different and they want to use you. But you do have to market towards that, though. You got to say, hey, you know, like, because uh, embrace their stereotype, especially if a woman, just say, hey, you know, my, my dad taught me this business, you know, he, you know, he, he didn't have a boy. So I was, you know, he taught it to me, like, you know, whatever, you know, whatever your story is, sell your story. And people, people always cheer for the underdog. So it, it's, it's an advantage. Um, but, you know, also you have to be, you do have to do extra. Like if you're, if you feel your race or gender may hold you back from certain customers uh, dialing you up, uh, you know, be sure you got a uniform. <laughs> Don't show up in a tank top, you know, don't be the stereotype, uh, you know, show up in a uniform, um, you know, obviously be articulate, you know, just, just don't be the stereotype. So uh, if anybody have any feedback or questions on that, feel free to put in the in the comments there and I'll answer them. Uh, uh, if you're live or if you watch this after the after the, uh, the live broadcast, uh, feel free to put questions or comments in there and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, just, just embrace it, man. Um, also, I'm going to talk about uh, small towns, right? Okay, hang on. I got to take a quick uh, coffee break. Hang on. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> so, uh, embracing small towns. Uh, and this is just from my uh, marketing business, my experience. Um, is challenging. The biggest challenges are small towns. And small towns that... that it doesn't necessarily have to be a small town, but it's a, you have big towns that are small towns. Like, you know, I'm from Buffalo, New York, originally. And that, to me, that's like a big, small town. Like, you got, you know, people that's been in it, you know, been living there for generations and, you know, don't, you know, probably never traveled, you know, more than 30 minutes outside the town <laughs> their whole life. Um, the challenges with that is is trying to build a name. Um, so, you know, with me being in a big, in vicinity to a bigger city, uh, I live in a, metro area of atlanta which is uh has a lot a lot a lot of growth and you have transient people here this is a very very successful city um you got a lot of fortune 500 companies here we have an international airport uh, millions and millions of people are here uh, transient people coming in and out that helps that's good for business we got new people coming in that bring their appliances or need new appliances or need their fix so the more people that lives around you the more opportunity now, some people argue, well, that's more competition, too. Yes, but uh, the number of people always outweigh the number of businesses. So, and, and everybody doesn't market the same. So, um, you know, you can have, you can be right next door to an appliance store, man, and, you know, work together, man. Like, you know, if he's, he might sell something, whatever makes him unique, you know, you can flip customers to him and they can flip them to you, whatever. 
Uh, but it's all about marketing and bringing people to you uh, or going to the customers, the consumer. Um, but if you're in a small town, uh, marketing, marketing, marketing is important. Old school guerrilla marketing, probably, because right now I think like direct mail and all that newspaper stuff is kind of, you know, old school. But it might work in smaller towns because sometimes, you know, smaller towns are kind of slower when it comes to embracing changes in technology and stuff like that. Um, so as far as marketing point of view, when it comes to appliances, I would uh, definitely try everything and see what works. And branding is very important. Uh, doing events is important. Like, you know, get what your public schools are always looking for help. Uh, case in point, my kid's school having a STEM night and I'm actually going to have uh, washers, a washer there that I'm taking apart and I'm going to show the kids how they work and stuff and stuff like that, man. It's just like, you know, and it's going to be parents there because it's like five o'clock. So it's after school. I'm going to be in uniform. And, and every time I do stuff at my kid's school, uh, it's always like one, I get at least two or three repair appointments out of it. That's not why I'm doing it, but it happens. Like, you know, this is, this is part of the process and um, it's free. Don't, you know, charge anything. And, uh, and sometimes schools will have events and I'll have vendor tables, man. And they want like maybe 20 bucks for a table or something like that, that they, you know, this is a donation for the school. And, uh, it's a great way to get to know your, your local, uh, community. Uh, so that's very effective in small towns, almost necessary and bigger town and bigger cities. It's, it's super effective too, especially for your local area. Um, because right now with the internet and marketing, we're so spread out. Like, you know, you get calls from 30 miles away and you're going far. And I think most of us want to be able to go down the street, you know, <laughs> and uh, have a strong local business. But uh, you got to have a local presence to do that. Um, you know, I think every town has like a fair, get a booth at a fair, um, a table. Because when it comes to appliance repair, everybody needs us. We're, we're, I think we're up there with like hospitality, like food and, and, and medical you know, you're always going to need a doctor. You're always going to need to eat, you know, and you're always going to need something fixed. <laughs> and one of those things is appliances. And, you, and you know, here you, you have to have a washer and dryer. So, um, you know, this this is this, this the nature to be. So this this uh, think outside the box, like, you know, like on your downtime, uh, the best thing to think about is your creative um, and creative is thinking like, oh, let me, you know, like, like. Like right now at the fairground here, uh, this is something I missed out on, but I need to, I need to get better at. Uh, they're having a hot tub liquidation sale. Some, so basically, a hot tub, I think what happens is some broker says, goes to the hot tub company, like, hey, we're going to have this event, the Greek County Fair. We're going to market the crap out of it. And, you know, we're gonna, you're going to sell some hot tubs. And so it's, it's, it's quote unquote liquidation sale. And that would be awesome to do with appliances. But I think, you know, we could probably work together with that with that event, you know. So um, that's something for me to think about in the future, like the approach to the fairground and seeing their standards events like that. And they have a booth like, you know, it's, it's people going to look at hot tubs. But, you know, there are people that they're more if, if you're looking to buy a hot tub, they're there for a hot tub. Uh, they're probably in the upper income um, bracket, I would assume, because, um, you know, hot tubs kind of is a, is a luxury item. I'm not a fan of hot tubs. I mean, they're nice you know, for the first like five minutes. But after a while, I was like, OK, we're just sitting in warm water. Uh, <laughs> it's great in the winter, so it's probably better for northern states. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, that would be great marketing, you know, just to have a booth there, um, maybe have some machines there, you know, you can um, uh, maybe even get with some local vendors and maybe they can have machines there too, and y'all call, you know, you just, just collaborate. Uh, but it's 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 eyeballs, it's people at an event, so um, that's important. Um, again, you guys got any questions? Feel free to. To ask them in the chat and uh we'll try to answer them um, this is reggie with a team appliance uh be sure to subscribe to my page i consistently do the, the bulk of my page is appliance repair and like you know telling you how to fix stuff um so um subscribe and you know there's tips on there if you are a customer and you're looking to have your machine fixed i'm sure i've covered your machine on my page um if you're a technician and you know just little tips man just like you know there's certain things that you, you know none of us i was just saying none of us is better than all of us and there's always something to learn uh, there's always a trick or a tip that can save us time and also save your customers money um you know so what up car mag one appreciate your brother what's up
I'm a fan of you, man. Thank you for, for, for watching and tuning in. Carmack one. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, so what else should we talk about? Uh, let's talk about repairs a little bit. So um, let's talk about customers. <laughs> so if you're a customer, you might have tuned up, you might have turned this one off. <laughs> you might have, you might have mute, mute this for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so let's talk about customers. Um, so I recently did a video on price presentation. And I felt that was necessary because I have technicians that I hire and I teach price presentation to them. And, and, and sometimes when I teach stuff, I, I, I look back and think like, why am I saying this? And what provoked me to say that? And it's usually like uh, having a negative, negative experience with a customer or something. So, you know, I had a customer that uh, I had to send a tech out for and, the, you know, the, well, the, it was a customer. And then I had a, a negative review online for my business last year uh, on this website that I haven't used in a long time and I ended up seeing it. I'm like, oh, <clears throat> um, and I believe uh, price price uh, presentation is important because uh, sometimes you get complacent. Uh, and I mean, as far as when to present a price to a customer. So I had, we had a, uh, I had a tech that had a customer to fly off the handle because, you know, he kind of, fix the machine and say, okay, this is how much it's going to be. And the customer was like, oh, well, you know, just completely f melted down and flew off the handle. <laughs> I guess because she felt like, you know, I wanted to be able to say no, but now you fixed it. I got to pay you this money. And you're, you're saying, hey, this is how much it, you know, and I'm sure that was a presentation. I'm sure he was very professional and everything. Uh, and this is, of course, customer's point of view, of course. And so um, he was just like, uh, you know, the customer just flew off the handle and uh, then at the bad review, uh, based off what they said, it sounded like I might have prices in it after fixing it. And I know I did get into a rhythm where, because there's a certain part of town I go into and I used to tell them the price before I fixed it. And the feedback I was getting from the customers was, yeah, okay. Like, you know, whatever, fix it, man. Like, <laughs> they were like, okay, why are you, why are you telling me the price? Just fix it. I don't care what the price is. And so it got me in a rhythm where I was just fixing it and they would just cut a check. You know, it was a higher, you know, higher income, you know, in, in part of town, you know, uh, higher end machines. And, you know, and most of them, they don't, they'll pay whatever as long as less than the price of a new one. And so, uh, but I still price fair. I, I, mean, I don't price based off of, you know, the value of your house. You know, if you live in a, a million dollar house or you live in a, a in a, five thousand dollar trailer you know the, i'm gonna price you the same you know on the repair so anyway price presenting before you fix the machine is important uh because even some customers will pay and not even say anything so um when, when, I, when you pay you know um you know they, they, they'll make me insult it but they won't say anything but the the, the body language it will tell you so they're like, oh, okay, you know, or that's it. That's usually me, you underprice them. But um, yeah, so anyway, price present before you repair. Some repairs do require you to actually fix the machine to know that's it. Like, you know, you could you could do it down to like one or two things. You're like, okay, let me replace this. And I think that will fix it, but I'm not sure. Let me, you know. So even then I will tell the customer, hey, you know, uh, I think, I, okay, I diagnosed it down to two things. <clears throat> it's either <clears throat> this part or that part. Uh, this um, if it's this part, this is how much it's going to be. If it's this part, that's how much it's going to be. But I won't know to actually install it and test the machine to make sure it's fixed the issue. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, you know, so price present. Let me let's go to some questions. Uh, Carmack, you say you got a big inventory. Cool, man. You getting a big so where you get your inventory from, Carmack? Tell me, tell me about that. Is it coming from you? Like you buying bulk off of a trailer? Uh, how much you paying per machine, man? Let's share that. I know we kind of went over that last week too. Um, so when you sell oven, you get one back. That's right. You know, the free Holloway, man. Uh, John Ward says, "I heard you could market appliance repair to hairdressers because they have washers and dryers. Is this true? And should this be part of who we market to?" I completely agree. Yes. Um, not only hair salons, hair salons, uh, nail salons. Um, I've had customers, those are probably my top two niche uh, businesses I've seen. Um, 
because only thing with hair that was in oh yeah and and uh dog groomers so but here's the thing you've got to completely approach it differently because most of these businesses are using commercial uh um, residential machines for commercial use and so they're getting hammered man so <laughs> you get a, you you're gonna so a case in point i had a dog groomer i actually end up uh not market uh dropping them as a client because it it required too much. I, like I was there like every like every ninety days, man, for something, and it was because you know it, it was nothing they was doing wrong. Like they, you know, it was just that the dog hair was this. Like, I'll clean the dryer out, man, and I'll come back, and it, it'll just, it'll be piled up back in the. It was just a complete fire hazard liability issue, and I was just like, you guys got to get a commercial machine because this this is this is this, this can't handle it. Um, but yeah, so you have uh in the hairdressers too. Uh, ventilation is important with the dryers uh, because also you'll get hair too and make sure like they like to get front loaders. Um, I don't recommend that for those businesses. I, re I actually recommend stackables because usually they don't have a lot of space and stackables are top load washers and so they can take more of abuse. But the, uh, the front loaders, man, the hair from the salon or, you know, whatever uh, the hair and stuff just completely clogs up the pumps uh then they're using towels so that weight will blow the bearing on those front loaders um so yeah just tell them man old school machines or stackable um and then tell them you have it then put them on retainer man just tell them you know you have a give them a maintenance package say hey every 90 days i'm gonna come back here and clean it out um to uh prevent like you know fires and the, the, for, for the longevity of the machine and then you know how they like you can probably probably replace the dryer rollers every once in a while. So I would just tell them like you know get a, a 90 day retainer uh, for whatever you feel is worth your time going back out there to clean the dryer the machine out. And then with that retainer you can offer hey you'll get a you know flat rate 50 bucks labor plus the cost of the part if something has to be replaced. And uh, a lot of those pe a lot of them will appreciate that because when their machines go down it's an emergency. Especially like a nail salon or hair, because they need towels. It's the towels. Um, yeah, man. So yeah, I definitely market to those businesses. Um, I have a restaurant too. Um, it's a uh, hibachi place, and old school. Man, I, I go a straight Maytag belt drive <laughs> with the big tubs. Uh, yeah, those companies. I do. I I, I provide. I sell them machines. I sell them just the Maytags with the. Uh, uh, with a belt because those are the most heavy duty machines and when they break you know it just hey let's get another one because if i put a whirlpool in there with those plastic couplers and stuff it just couldn't handle the abuse with the towels and you got food and it's just ugh. so <laughs> so anyway uh so and just be honest you're looking at those machines now i'm like i bring my own napkins because <laughs> that's what it is i'm like I'm like ugh. so anyway um so Carmax, you, you get your machines from because Carmax said he has a big inventory, and he gets them from uh, scrappers and marketplace. So you say he had a big inventory coming in. It's not like a, a one load thing. That's what I thought you were talking about. Uh, yeah, re really for inventory though, bro. Um, there's a lot of places to get. So let's talk inventory. So if you are an appliance flipper, and I'm trying to hide my mess as much as possible. All right. <laughs> uh, if you're an appliance flipper, where should you get inventory? So inventory can come from uh, multiple places. Um, the best, I would say creme de la creme inventory would be buying bulk online. So if you got about like probably about two grand to spend, um, you can buy You can buy uh oops hang on. You can buy the units. I'm sorry, multitasking. <laughs> Reading and talking. So if if you you can buy um bulk from online, uh, there's online uh auction sites. Uh and sometimes uh Lowe's is a part of it, uh Home Depot. I know I bought a Lowe's load. And those are usually machines they remove from people buying new ones. And so those things are nice. I mean, I got like fridges in that still had ice in them. That's how fresh they were. And that, that was a nice load. 
um, after paying shipping and everything, I think I paid like two grand. And it came down to like forty dollars a machine. Um, nice stuff, stainless steel refrigerators, ovens, washers, and dryers. Uh, it was nice, man. I had to get uh, two 26 foot U hauls to haul them as the truck came out. But you also you need somewhere to. I had a friend actually let me use his his, his dock, so you you need a dock for those trucks. Um, so that, that's like the creme de la creme, the best stuff, you know. Or if you can, if you're driving around and you see some a uh, uh, um a truck with a lift gate unloading appliances, those guys will sell you the haulaways too. So that's that's another. But sometimes they're overpriced because they'll look. Like, <laughs> excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so they'll um, they'll sell them to you, but sometimes they're overpriced. Those guys don't, they don't they're not appliance guys, so they'll say a they'll say a they'll say a pretty uh, stainless steel fridge like Samsung, you know, which you know I think a lot of us know what Samsung's about. And they're oh yeah, that's a nice fridge. It's not uh, five hundred dollars you can buy. You're like what? Come on, man. And he's like three hundred dollars worth of parts, you know. <laughs> and so. Uh, yeah, you gotta know your market, man. And uh, so that, that's just one one thing that the worst ones to get, but not too bad, would be I would say scrappers. Um, you kind of got pick and choose the, who the scrappers you use. Some someone will screw you over because they'll get a machines from appliance people that want to like, they, you know, like when we fix machines in our shop, we have machines we take to the the junkyard because we you know we pull parts off them or we can demo like they need like a expensive part that that exceeds the value of the machine or something. And sometimes those scrap guys, like, like I give mine to scrap guys, and you know, the scrap guys I used to actually take them to the scrapyard. But you get some guys that try to flip them to other appliance people, and like, you know, those are the worst ones to get. You don't want something that an appliance guy doesn't want. Um, so yeah, man. So it's, it's, it's so many places to get inventory from. Uh, thanks, John, for the comment. Great info. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you know, and what software do you recommend? Space Age Three Thousand. What says what software do you recommend? Uh, I need more specifics. Like, what do you mean? Um, as far as you know, my phone ringing off the hook now, I got customers calling. <laughs> Missing out on repairs, man. No. <laughs> um, I don't. I, again, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to learn the tech stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm not anti. I'm not one of those guys like, oh, I, I, you know, this tech stuff. I hate it. You know, I'm not anti. I embrace it. It just takes time to learn it. Um, so right now I, I, I don't really use software. Um, I use apps for marketing. I use, um, I try to stay away from software because most, um, platforms give you all the tools you need. Like, like when I do ads for my marketing side of my business, I use like, I use, if I'm doing Facebook ads, I use Facebook's, um, uh, tools they, they you know they give you they have a actual facebook ad site where you know you, you can do everything you need right there and then but what happens is you have sometimes you have other companies that know uh that will use the word hey we do you know we help you with your facebook you know marketing and they'll have their own software that's pretty much the same thing but you know you know, I don't know it's kind of like taking a a wash machine a whirlpool washer ripping off the whirlpool and putting your own brain on it and say, <laughs> so uh some of them, i mean some of them do have improvements on the software i guess um or they'll 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 sync with multiple things that you may need uh to run effective ads like to run ads you need you know you need stuff to uh do pictures with and you know uh photoshop and stuff and all that uh, but for the most part i don't really um, and Google used so much free stuff, man. Like Google, like I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't buy Microsoft, I don't buy Excel, Microsoft packages, because Google gives you that same stuff for free. Um, Google Sheets, you know what I mean? <laughs> so Google, you know, that's the same stuff Microsoft charges you for free. So I, I try to, you know, the name of the game is, man. There's so much free stuff, and and you know. Somebody, I, I, I listened to somebody on YouTube the other day who was saying, I think it was Gary Vee, he was saying how to put, to throw money at something is just lazy. And that's true to a certain extent. Certain things you do have to pay for, though. Um, and, you know, and plus, 
you only have so much time. Like, you know, again, like appliance repair. Uh, yeah, maybe a customer can fix it themselves by looking at YouTube, but do they have the time, right? Uh, do they want it done right? So certain things is worth paying for. But uh, first, I'm going to find out if it's worth paying for. You know what I mean? Instead of just uh, trying to do it myself. And then if it's the time, so, okay, this is worth somebody, you know, paying somebody to do. Or this is worth paying for the extra package or, you know. So I have stuff that I pay for. It. I can probably do it my, my own. But the ease, you know, the, the way it frees up my time. I'm able to, uh, you know, it's worth paying for it because I'm basically, ba- basically bang, buy, uh, <laughs> buying my own time back. So, um, are the apps hard to keep up with? Um, once you get into a rhythm, because um, everything can be, can be, let me see. I'll show you my phone. I'm gonna check. I tried my phone. See, uh, there's a way I can share my screen. I'm going I'm to I'm learn that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get there. So these are my apps, and so I got th- I got th- yeah you can't really see them very well. Those are my boys, but on my apps I have everything categorized, so you can't really see through the camera. But um, so I got listing apps, so I got a, a, a package where all these are all the apps that I list my marketing on. <clears throat> so I got like Facebook, Let Go, Google My Business, Nextdoor, Offer Up, and Five Mile. Is where I, I do ads, you know, for my business, and then I have money apps, and these are apps I take payments payments on, so I can find everything real quick and easy. So I got Google Pay, Venmo, uh, Samsung Pay, PayPal, and Cash App, and then I have paid my for paid apps. So these are apps that I have to put money into for advertising. That's in a category. So I got like Facebook ads, Yelp. Google Ads, uh, Groupon, Mark Merchant, AdSense, and, and Yelp Business. And then I have marketing apps. <clears throat> and this really just means like branding. So it's basically branding. So like Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is good if you want to bring tra- traffic to your website. Because uh, Pinterest is like a visual Google where people see stuff and they click on pictures. So so Pinterest is really good to bring traffic to your website. Because um, Pinterest, you do a Pinterest ad, and uh, you basically put on there like, like I put on there uh, top five laundry detergent recommendations, and so it'll be like, so I'll link that to my website, and it'll bring people to my site to look to read the article, and then while you're there, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, like buy a part or something. Uh, I've got Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Reddit. Uh, Quora, which uh, this is some stuff I, I work, I try, I, I looked at it all the time. Twitter, so that's how I keep up with my apps. Just li- I spin them in categories. Uh, I got business management, listing to, so yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, what service apps for billing and appointments? So again, free, free, free. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff you can pay for. So what I do for billing, I use Square, and I use Square to keep up with my accounting. So with Square, you can actually, uh, like if you get cash, you can't see it, but if you get cash, you can make cash receipts. And so if I do a repair, I'll use Square. I'll click on here, the, the, the amount that the customer's paying, and I'll send it, you know, and then you can either email or text the customer a receipt. Um, I've always used Square, man. I was never a fan of sitting there with a big invoice pad and writing. Like, I, I, I'm trying to go to the next stop, man. So <laughs> I check people with papers, you know. And um, so, so you can do that for Square. You keep uh, your inventory on here. They actually give you a free website, uh, like a marketplace website. So you can put inventory on there and send people to it. Um, hang on, one of my texts sent me something. Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's my reschedule. Um, sorry about that. Was one of my th- uh, business man had to handle some of my texts. So where were we? Oh, yeah. So Square. And so Square gives you a free car reader. Uh, Square charges you, I think, 3.5% on credit card transactions. But most of my transactions are cash or checks. So, But I still use this for receipts. 
Um, Square actually will give you loans too, based off of the amount of value you, you got coming in. Um, so that's kind of cool. If you you know you need a, you know some some money, buy some new tools or something. You know you know, but be careful with loans. Loans are run you out of business. So uh, sometimes it's better to wait or find a better deal or try to find them somewhere else. What you need. Um, yeah, so Square is cool. Um, so I use that, and then oh, as far as scheduling, I use Google Calendar to do my scheduling. So whatever I have, uh, like stops I have available, I'll just Google Calendar it, and because uh, uh, I communicate with my customers a lot through text, because um, it's way better, man. They're trying to call people on a like you'll be on a phone all day if you have to if you try to communicate just through the telephone. So most of my marketing is through apps and stuff that requires texting. So everything, I, you know, all my, all my marketing is through some sort of text format. So the customers are familiar with texting already. And, uh, yeah, it, it convert. Like, if you're still, like, trying to get customers to call you and doing phone call stuff, that slows you down, man. Especially because you get the – especially if you get the customer that wants to talk your ear off, man. You're just like, man, I'm trying to – you know, you, or you're on a repair. So it allows you to multitask a lot. And also with texting, you have – a record of what was said. Oh, you told me on the phone it's gonna be 150. Like no, 100. Because 150, 160 sounds the same for some reason. So, <laughs> like nope. This is what the text says. Uh, you know, or you know, especially if you work with so many customers on the phone, you gotta remember what you said to who. You know, so with texting, you kind of scroll back through and um and, and record what you actually uh, look at what you actually said. Also, I use Google Voice for my business. Uh, don't ever, ever use just your cell phone because if your cell phone dies or you lose it, all your information and contacts are gone. I mean, you got some cloud services, I guess, but Google Voice is you'll have that same phone number forever until unless some, at some point Google decides not to have the discontinued voice, which I highly doubt they'll do. Because uh, with voice, it allows you to transfer your number so I case in point, one time my phone, I dropped my phone or something. I think it was dropped in water or something. It was at the beach or something. And uh, it, it was dead. And all I did was got on my wife's phone, downloaded Google Voice app, and logged in. And boom, I was right back in business, man. You know, I could I'd get taxes and everything. There was no waiting for a new phone to come in, none of, none of that stuff. So um, Google Voice, I'm a high, I'm big fan of Google Voice. Free. It's free. <laughs> and... Uh, even if you're somewhere that don't get a cell phone signal, you can plug Google Voice on your computer. So um, it, it just makes sense, man. It just makes sense. Um, okay, let's read some of these questions. So Space Age 3000, hope that answers your question on billing and, and appointment apps. Secure the bag. Appliance repair can cover a vast amount of stuff in the kitchen. Do you focus on certain appliances to stay efficient, or do you repair everything? Uh, I focus on washers and dryers um, because, for me, this is a business that I want to grow um, to a point where you know I'm dispatching. I can do other things. I, I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so. It's a lot, I like to do a lot of different things. Um, but if I'm like, if I were to depend, like if this, if I was creating my own job, which you're, you know, self-employed do, if I'm creating my own job, then I would, I'd encourage you to learn everything. Um, because there's good money in refrigeration. Um, and, but washers and dryers, this, the market for that is huge because, um, it's huge and, and, and they're quick and easy to repair. The parts are easy to carry on your truck. Uh, they don't, you know, and everybody has them. Uh, with refrigerators, you're kind of limited towards homeowners. Um, so, because people within apartment complexes typically, you know, the apartment complexes will have, you know, provide that stuff. And if you try to actually get contract work with appliance, with apartment buildings, you can, but they want you to work super cheap. Because <laughs> they think, oh, we're giving you all this business, you know. So, um, to me, that's not worth it. But uh, yeah, my niche is washers and dryers uh, for sales, too. And also, I feel washers and dryers are less stressful um, than, let's say, you know, a, a refrigerator. Like, if you're going to repair a refrigerator, 
and let's say you go there and you know case in point you're busy so you make the appointment for two days later so they out of refrigerator for two days you get there you find out it has a needs a compressor or something that has to be ordered so that's gonna be a week and people just get completely bent out of shape when they have no refrigerator <laughs> so for me i like the path of least resistance so um but so but i do have a crew so i've got a fridge guy that does that you know there's fridges and ovens and stuff like that uh, i've got a, a washer dryer guy uh i'm a washer dryer guy um so i i, I outsource um and it's you know and just collect you know get a little bit um collect a bit off of what i you know what i outsource um, that way, I don't, I'm not losing business. Because for the longest, people are like, hey, you do refrigerator? It's like, nope. And every time you say no to a customer, man, you might as well take money out of your pocket and just throw it, out, <laughs> throw it away. So, um, yeah, especially you start building a name. Like, I, I built such a name for myself. It, uh, I probably lost a lot of business when I didn't have a fridge guy. Because um, people were always ask me about refrigerator stuff. And uh, so I'll fix one here and there. But for the most part, I try to stay in my lane. And plus, I'm busy enough. So, and I'm a big fan of marketing. Like, you can you can totally just be a fridge guy, you know. Uh, you can totally be an oven guy. Maybe it depends on your area. Uh, but if you can market it towards that, you can market it and you can sell them as a backup. You know what I mean? So, if you want to be like a, just a solely a fridge guy, because of the you know the the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the net on uh, you know on return is way bigger. Um, Especially when you sit there, you know, you got to replace compressors and do Freon and all that stuff. Uh, and then on slower, slower seasons or months, days or weeks, you can, you know, because everybody in mama wants to get rid of a refrigerator. There's almost never a reason to buy a refrigerator to resell. Uh, everybody's trying to get rid of one. So you can offer free pickup refrigerators, fix them, and then sell those on the side too. And, uh, you know, you you know, on a lower end fridge, you're going to get like two to $300. The higher end stuff, you're gonna get close to a thousand, you know. So, uh, hopefully, that answers your question. Secure the bag, Lita. I found your videos this week and really, really enjoy both you and the education you've gifted me. I am a I'm not gonna say that new person. Question: Where do you buy your supplies and tools? Okay. Um, first of all. You're not you're not stupid. Don't say that. <laughs> say that about yourself. Um, yeah, we always want to uplift ourselves. And even though I know you don't really mean that, you know, or, you know, or believe that much stuff, but still, just to say it out loud. No. So anyway, uh, you're a great person. What do you? So where do you buy supplies and tools? I was uh, Harbor Freight. I got I got a cheap route, man. Harbor Freight, uh, eBay or Amazon. Um, or if you check garage sales, if you're trying to get into business, uh, Harbor Freight is a good start. Um, there's certain things at Harbor Freight you want to avoid. Like there's a lot of people who say, oh, it's cheap China stuff. Number one, uh, and everything cheap comes from China because quality stuff comes from China too. iPhones are made in China. So, <laughs> you know, the stuff you like that is dependable is made in China. So, but just like any other suppliers, you know, even when, you know, America was number one in supplies, you know, there were cheap stuff and you know high-end stuff doesn't matter on who you use so anyway um harbor freight has they don't have crap stuff some of the stuff is crap but some of the stuff is really good like you can't mess up a screwdriver you know what i mean um so the screwdrivers are good uh i would stay away from a lot of the electric stuff um like the drills the drills are, are they are crappy um but you do want you want to spend money on a drill because the the key to a good drill, and I won't even get a used drill. I'll get a the key to the the drill isn't the actual drill itself; it's the battery. Um, because if you get a cheap drill, you have to charge that thing every day, and then at, at some point it won't hold a charge at all because the battery sucks. Um, but if you get a good drill, you charge it once a week, and that battery lasts you a very very long time. And so in drills, the real value is the actual battery. Um, if you get a brand new battery with a used like actual drill, then yeah, that's that's a good deal. But always get the battery new, man, because you know. So um, yeah, that Walmart got some good stuff like Black and Decker. That's like a middle ground between cheap and you know in quality. Um, Black and Decker stuff is very you know it's dependable, not the best quality, but it's 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 a good value for your money if you're in a budget. Um, 
so that and then you know just you could cruise eBay and Amazon for for like cheaper tools and specialty specialty tools. Love that answers your question. Hey Patricia, thank you so much. All right, Space Age three thousand X are the high end washers and dryers just as easy to work on compared to the cheaper brands. Um, yes, if you know them, <clears throat> the higher end stuff if you're talking about like the more expensive things like the newer stuff uh you get more into electronics and boards um people are more willing to uh pay more for the repair on the higher end stuff um because they paid <laughs> a lot of money so so like it's kind of like you know your cars right so if you get a brake job done on your ford um it's a certain like price point you would you would do like you know let's let's say a, you know you get your brakes changed you, you know, i don't know $200 let's just throw a number out there let's say on your Ford it's $200 to, to get your your front brakes changed you're like okay cool but if you have a Mercedes it may be 800 or 1000 dollars to get those brakes changed right but the the car what you pay out way more for the car and you're expecting you know okay maybe the parts more expensive and you know it's just a little more fancier but um so it's the same thing with appliances uh the higher end ones they they will pay more and you will have to unfortunately because the parts are more especially when you come to boards and stuff like that um but you're talking about older higher end stuff um as far as your cost it's, it's, it's close to almost the same um uh yeah so yeah they're they're um higher end washers just easy as far as the ease of repair uh i wouldn't say as easy but you just have to know them and learn them um and sometimes it depends on your mind because you have at the end of the day a, a clogged drain is a clogged drain i don't care if it's on a, a three thousand dollar machine or it's on a five hundred dollar machine you know so it's just a matter of getting to the drain the, the pump the drain pump um so the only thing in the higher end machines i would say is a lot more screws <laughs> and sometimes stuff is harder to get to, but you know, it's, it's, it's apples and oranges, I guess, to answer to your question. Uh, Reg, what's up, Reg Dave? Good name, man. Good name. <laughs> uh, I started my own business. How do I get my phone ringing? I have a couple of third party warranty companies, but only getting about two calls a week. Well, Reg, number one, contact me because I do small business marketing. Uh, you can reach out to me uh, on uh, my Facebook page, which is A Team Appliance, uh, located in Snellville, Georgia. Um, or you can uh, you can call me or text me. Man. Don't call me, man. Let's just text. <laughs> I'll put my number here. I, I think it shows up. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hang on. Let me try to put my number in. It's a computer. Um, but, yeah, right now. Uh, so I, I can, I, I mean, I'll give you a lot of free game, man. I'll tell you what you can do on your own. Um, but eventually you do want to have a marketing budget for, uh, to get your phone ringing. Hang on, put my information here. So I'll tell you my number two. Um, I guess you guys rewind this stuff later on on a rebroadcast. Six seven eight six one five eight three one seven. Text me, um, or you could look me up on Facebook. Uh, my name is Reggie Williams, and my company is A Team Appliance. Uh, so, how do you get your phone ringing? Number. So the, <laughs> I'm trying to gather my thoughts because this is like, yeah, I just want to get all this information. Um, so the best way to start is free, 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 free stuff. Get your, fill out every, like get a Google My Business, start off with Google My Business, um, look that up and go through that and, and get your business on Google and and the free part. Now I'm talking about the free stuff. So the free stuff is Google My Business, where they establish your business. Uh, on Google, you're on Google Maps because uh, people people are going from standalone GPS to to Google Maps. Um, actually, let me let me show you. I did I actually did a commercial for this. Okay, Google, call A Team Appliance Snailville.
It says that it says calling ATM appliance now. I don't know if you can see it. That's the level you want to get to. Where because voice is the next thing. This it's the next like right now everybody's using apps and stuff, but now with like Alexa and all that, voice is gonna be the next thing. People are gonna say, you know, hey Alexa, hey Google, call uh call an appliance repair technician, and you want your number to pop up first. So uh start with Google My Business. It's a free website through Google. You can put pictures on there, you can put inventory on there, you can put your business hours on there. Uh you just have to verify the business. Um do that. It's 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 that's awesome tools so have your name out there um next you want to uh apps so if you watch the rebroadcast of our show from last saturday i talked about apps um you've got the ones i use is five mile offer up next door facebook marketplace let go and google my business um so there you want to uh so i assume you have a repair business so some of them will allow you to uh, to put a service on there oh also do you know what i've been leaving out is yelp do yelp too now yelp is going to try to get you to do marketing which you know it's not bad but do the free stuff first before you start spending money if you're new in business do the free stuff first uh, and get that going because that's it's gonna take some sweat equity. So spend sweat equity before you actually spend your greenbacks. Um, so Yelp is 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 awesome. The people a lot of people look up Yelp, but you just want to have your a Yelp page so people can look you up. Um, as far as warranting companies concerned, don't depend on warranty companies to for the survival of your business. Um, Warranty companies is good to keep you busy, I guess, when it's slow. But eh, for the most part, they cut you off when they want to. Uh, they don't pay you for what you do. Uh, they want you to work super, super cheap. And uh, if you're hiring people, you're going to lose technicians left and right if you're giving them warranty business because they're not going to make no money at all. And, um, yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, warranty companies are good to have in your back pocket. keeps you busy. might keep the lights on maybe with the little pocket change you get from them. Um, but go right to, to the consumer. Hey, I repair stuff. Call me. You know what I mean? So get your name out there on, on apps. <coughs> Excuse me. So hang on. I haven't had a coffee break in a while. Hang on. Ah, it's nice and cold now. <laughs> so if you use a warranty company, oh, I'll be on that, I'm sorry. So if you um, want the phone to ring, go right to the consumer. They'll know what you do. Uh, on some of the apps that require you to actually display a product and not a service, there's a workaround for that. Um, what I do is I give away free uh dryer balls so there's these little wool balls that are substitutes for fabric softeners and you put them in a dryer and they, they're good for like a thousand loads and they're supposed to be like a natural fabric softener and they're like five bucks so i also so what i do is i'll do free uh laundry dryer balls uh with every paid repair so you can do that, or you can say you can throw in a free like a dryer brush. Some of those will cost you a lot of money, um, but you can throw something in. Or like I sell machines, so I'll put you know I'll put like a hey Whirlpool washer for sale, um, buy mine, or I can fix yours. So there's there's workarounds you can do to actually sell a product and let them know you service things. So hopefully that answered your question there, uh, Reg Dave, but. Uh, as soon as you're ready, though, let me know. And uh, if you have at least a minimum of $250 to invest in ad spend, that's not money that goes to me. That money that goes towards uh, Facebook that I use to, to do ads. Um, I can get you. I can get you going with Facebook ads, and I'll get your phone ringing with leads and stuff like that. Uh, I would just have to do a, um, a strategy session with you so we can figure out the best direction to go for the ads. Um, Again, you can subscribe. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the page. 
uh, don't forget to like my videos. Um, you know, this is how, you know, this, this is funded. Because <laughs> right now I can be out doing repairs. Instead of giving you all this information. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's see. John Ward, brother, what you got? Should you start signing up with warranty companies and COD calls or just stick with COD calls and flipping? What would be the best way to push your name in business? Both. B both. So I guess, yeah, so I guess my last rant kind of recovered that. But, yeah, both, man. Both, man. Just um, <clears throat> COD is the way to go. That's going to that's gonna keep you in business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, with warranties, though, the, the, the thing with warranties, I guess, to play the, the work to warranty companies is to be cheap so they, they, they'll send you more and more leads. Um, but you get paid. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, but you will get paid when you go to a customer house that has a clogged like air duct in their dryer. Something that the warranty companies don't cover. So if um, you know you go there for a heating element issue or whatever or a fuse trips, okay, you get paid from the warranty company for the fuse because I think they, they will cover that. But you say, hey, this was caused because your air ducts were clogged or you got a bird nest out there or something. And you can say, hey, okay, this is how much I would charge to actually uh, leave that issue. And so that's where that money comes from. So you got to be a bit of a salesman. Um, and then also, so I guess you could use warranty companies to get you in the door. So you can say, you know, um, also, like, let's say that the, the washer has an issue. You can inspect other things and say, hey, look, this is going to go next on that, you know. And, it's you know, the, the deductible the customer is paying is $80 anyway. So you can say, hey, instead of charging to come back out, you know, and paying an $80 deductible, I'll do it for, X, you know, I'll fix your agitator, you know, whatever. You can, you can do all kind of upsells, man. You can upsell products. <clears throat> so let's say they have a, a, a flex pipe that's kind of worn. If you carry some on your truck, you know, and say, hey, I can replace your dryer vent. It looks like it needs replacing for X amount of dollars. Or, you know, you can even recommend. I mean, don't really just push sales and say, hey, you know, I'm here to fix the such and such. But, you know, it's also my job to give recommendations. And so these are the recommendations I have for which for foreseeing what may be issues in the future. Um, so you can upsell, man, uh, with warranty. So uh, you can go broke with warranty companies. But there's a way of working, the using it as an opportunity to um to make money but if you're hiring people they may not do that um because they may have a you know, like you know uh, it's a poor man's mentality sometimes and you have people that you're hired that won't necessarily um upsell so they could they could if they, they're hungry enough and you know again it depends on who you hire you know everybody's different so let's see what auction online can you find those Finances in bulk. Um, I don't know if I want to give that secret out. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so Magic Mike's Auto Detailing. That's an interesting name because Magic Mike was a movie and uh, that and detailing, you just put those two and two together. It, it, and I don't know if I'll send my wife down to get her car detailed down there. <laughs> so uh, let's see. What auction? So auction, he wants to, uh, Mike wants to know what auction sites online you can find those bulk appliances um oh man i'm trying to think of the name of it it just left my head uh let me look at it real quick because i used them a, a while back and i got to a point where i was like man like because you can buy like scratch and dent stuff um but there's a couple if you google uh Appliance auctions. Let's see. Let's see the name. I remember it, man. But you got liquidation signs. Uh, it's called box something. Overstock. Overstock. Drug liquid. Oh, B stock. That's what it is. B stock solutions. So if you go to B stock, you'll open an account. And you can buy, you, you bid. And uh, at one point, Lowe's was selling their uh, return stuff on there. 
Um, and you can probably, you, you can buy them for, you know, between like 15 to two grand and, you know, the shipping is, you know, the, the, your shipping quote and everything. Um, but it's everything on it. It's, it's an amazing site, man. B stock. I should have put a, like a link on here so I can get some money for it. <laughs> so, uh, engineer to plans repair. What's up, man? Welcome back. And, uh, actually about at that one hour mark. So fortunately we're about to wrap it up so I can get to work, man. So, yeah, so actually next we got, uh, I, I've got a repair schedule for today, but we're supposed to get some bad weather. Um, so I'm kind of pushing stuff off to Monday. And then also, uh, you know, I got, a, I got a son in Boy Scouts and we have the uh, Pinewood Derby. So we're going to do some uh, Pinewood Derby cars. So I'm going to turn into a carpenter <laughs> for the next few hours. And uh, so we're going to do that. And um, then I'm sneaking a repair because uh, I need today to be uh financially productive too uh, uh you know as long you know also spending time with the family so i'm gonna sneak that in i got some texts out in the field right now putting in some work and um you know again man i'm here to give you guys advice if you uh again if you need help with marketing um i do free consultation uh i don't charge for um the, the initial um uh the the initial start of your marketing uh, only thing you have to pay for is the ad spend, which is two hundred fifty dollars minimum. The more you have to spend on ads, the you know the more I, more leads I can give you. Um, but usually, out uh, of two fifty, the amount of uh, repair leads depends on your area uh, and the tools you give me to help you. As far as like pictures of your, like your, your vehicles or pictures, uh, if you have a, a video already of your business stuff that you've already used, I can reuse for ads. That'd be awesome. Um, because with Facebook ads, I use Facebook ads and with Facebook ads, uh, it's complicated. And if you try it on your own, you're going to, you're going to piss through a lot of money and say right now, cause you know, you target stuff. So, uh, so I've been through the pissing away money uh, phase <laughs> of my own business. It's now I got a down pack. So I just want to help you guys out. Um, so yeah, I, um, I, I definitely, you definitely make your money back. I guarantee you that. Uh, I mean, I've ran into some, some roadblocks with, with, uh, the clients in certain areas where, you know, uh, they didn't work as well, but I at least made their money back. Um, but uh, it depends on the area and the tools you give me to work with. But for the most part, uh, most of the clients I work with are successful with uh, generating ads through Facebook. So you can reach me. You can, uh, you can text me on my my phone, 678-615-8317. Uh, or you can look me up on Facebook. Um, uh, Facebook, my company name is A-Team Appliance out of Snellville, Georgia. Uh, you can also message me here on YouTube. Um, you can, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, that's very important. You know, I'm giving the game for free. The only thing I ask is, you know, subscribe, like some videos, whatever. It helps keep the, the train going. Uh, we'll be here next Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna say 10 AM, but, uh, just constantly check, uh, the YouTube channel, the YouTube page for updates. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely be here next Saturday. And if you guys have any ideas or stuff you want to talk about, let me know. Bring your questions. Um, you know, again, none of us is better than all of us. So let's share our knowledge. Uh, we have questions. Let me know. Uh, if you're a customer, you're not in the business, and you just have questions on repairing your machine, if it's something I don't know how to fix, I can put the question out there. There's other qualified technicians on the channel, uh, and we'll, we'll figure it out together. Um, so if there's any questions, get them in now. Cause I got I got to I gotta do Boy Scout stuff, man. I got to <laughs> it's Saturday. So if you got any questions, let me know. Gotta get it in with the kids. Actually they're Cub Scouts, that boys, they're Cub Scouts. So six and seven years old. Um so yeah, if you have any questions, get them in now, man. Uh John, I appreciate the love, man. It says best information you ever received. I appreciate it, man. But if you guys have any questions, you know, I'm giving it we're giving the game away for free. So the information is easy. It's about the execution, man. Uh, you know, it's about execution. So, um, you know, we're here to help you with that too. You know, it's about execution, motivation, um, and it's putting in the work, you know? So, and this is a business where your money, money means nothing. Like the money you have to, you don't need to spend money. You need to spend sweat and blood. And sometimes tears because there's gonna be some frustrating times you're gonna throw tools so <laughs> um yeah this, this sweat equity man is more value than money when it comes to the appliance business putting in the hustle 
Uh, and right now, we you know we're in the age of the internet. You know, I'm a, I'm 42 years old, and I remember when you know all you had was the the newspaper or the yellow pages, and there were middlemen that kept you from putting your your taking your product to market. Like you had a big like Walmart to put your stuff on your shelves. Like, you know, you, you don't have to do that anymore. No you can get uh, uh, eBay pay. Uh, you have eBay business, Amazon, um, you know, the service business. There's so many different apps you can use. There's so many different platforms that don't require any money whatsoever. You can put an ad on and tell people, hey, this is what I do. Use me. You know what I'm saying? So. I right, appreciate you, man. Uh, engineered Appliance. Patricia, appreciate you. God bless you. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm about to go offline, but you know, this channel is 24 hours, you know, so you guys leave a comment and I'll, I'll, I'll respond back as soon as I can. Uh, if not, catch us next Saturday. Um, you know, tune in, should be 10 AM, you know, hopefully <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it at 10 AM. It's, it's, you know, sometimes you, you know, with the family, man, you got stuff to do, especially on Saturdays. So it's always a birthday party or something, man. And you're trying to work in, you know, some, some money repairs. Um, Again, man, y'all stay safe out there, um, you know, uh, and just keep grinding, man. And number one thing, too, make your smartphone your best friend. If you at you drive into an appointment, you, you sit there, customer's not there yet, post an ad. You wake up in the morning, post an ad. You know, it's, it's use your downtime, boom, your computer is in your hand. This is your, this is your money maker right here. Post an ad, post an ad, post an ad. That's the number one way of being successful. Uh, on one of the apps, Facebook Marketplace, uh, Offer Up, any of the apps I said, you know, you're, you're Google My Business, um, just post, 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 post. So, anyway, this is Reggie with A Team Appliance. Don't forget to please, please subscribe. Uh, that keeps us in business here on YouTube. <laughs> um, subscribe. That way you get alerts from, you know, the stuff we're doing and all the, the, the advice I give out on a, a washer dryer repair and also the business. Um, feel free to scroll through my page after I log off, whatever. And I, uh, you know, I'm here to answer any questions and, uh, man, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Um, just let me know, you know, Hey, I'm always, I'm always, I'm always, uh, touchable. So just let me know if you need me and uh, appreciate you, Jimbo, Patricia, engineer, John, uh, everybody else that's on the channel. Uh, Y'all have a great weekend. Hope your team wins the playoffs this weekend. And, uh, you know, let me know if you need me. The Boy Scouts. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go Boy Scout.